Howdy everybody and welcome to another Agency Overdrive lecture. In this lecture, I want to talk about and show you the build and the strategy behind a Facebook dynamic creative campaign. And I think this is a very important lecture to talk about and to focus on, especially if you're interested or you're working on Facebook advertising and Facebook ad campaigns, because there's been this like overall shift in the industry over the last couple of years towards more automation. Now, back in the day when I started, there was very little automation. And I, and I didn't start that long ago, like we're talking four or five years. And Google ads campaigns were primarily, and Facebook ads campaigns, they were primarily driven by manual bidding. Those were the campaigns that performed really well. And you were able to create automation that helped the, the focus of the manual bidding perform better. So for example, you, you know, you'd have the bid to average position, position script in Google ads. Um, you might run automated AB testing campaigns in Facebook ads, but there wasn't as much focus on automated bidding um, as there is now. And I think it's very important to understand that this shift is a good thing, but it's also a good shift for agencies and freelancers as well. And I'll explain what that means. For a while, I was and the rest of my team, we were pretty scared to talk to clients about automation. And when we, would, when we would sign a client, a client would typically ask us, they'd say like, okay, well, how much automation do you use? Or what sort of automation do you use? Or what type of bidding strategies do you use? And fundamentally, these are questions that are more like based around the client's own anxiety, because really the question should be asking was like, okay, what's, here's the performance that we need when do you think you're going to get there and can you get there like those are really the questions you want to ask but okay but our answer typically was something like you know we are very much into manually understanding um the campaigns and manual bidding and you know there's a healthy dose of of automation that helps our effort and now we tell clients that no we're going to be using and testing you know target cpa bidding and campaign budget optimizer in facebook and dynamic creative in facebook and there's natural it's natural to feel a fear of getting some sort of pushback from clients on that because like okay well if you're setting up all this automation like what's what good are you so first let me explain to you how we answer that question now because that might be interesting to you what we basically tell our clients is listen google and facebook and these artificial intelligence systems are going to do a lot better job than any human ever can to determine the exact right bid at the right time, which ad variation should be shown, and all these different data points. But our job is to work on the creative. Our job is to feed the system the best possible data, and that's not easy, right? Writing good ads, designing good ads, um, figuring out how to incorporate all the principles of persuasion into your copy, into your image assets, into your video, creating the video, testing different audiences, testing different, um, testing different targeting parameters against each other, right? All those different things. And that's where the work has sort of shifted. It used to be that an equal amount of work or even more work was put into like the individual settings of a campaign, whether it be day parting, scheduling certain times, picking, do you want to advertise to different genders and how much you should pay and bid adjustments. Like it's my guess, like I guess that bid adjustments are going to go away entirely um, in Google ads um, soon. Like there is no notice of that, but I think that that's going to happen. It's just my sense of where the industry is going. And when it came to Facebook campaigns, um, the focus was on all these different combinations of audience targeting and, and so on and so forth. But now the shift really is the most, well, most of your work should really be done in creating good ads, giving Google the best, giving Google and Facebook the best possible, strongest creative assets that your team can, can could come up with. The most creative, the most interesting, the most appealing, the most psychologically persuasive. Like that's what you really want to focus on. And that's a big place to focus your skills on. So we're going to cover a couple things in this lecture. We're going to talk about dynamic creative, like why that's really important, what it actually is, what it's actually doing. We're going to talk about um, the pixel a little bit. We'll talk about lookalike audiences a little bit, but the main focus is on choosing the best types of campaign objectives 
and building a campaign and then duplicating a bunch of different ad sets to test some different targeting. And my company manages, we manage well into the seven figures of Facebook advertising budget. And it's interesting, like when we, I was never, or I wasn't always the Facebook guy at the company. Um, I was always the Google guy. I was always very much more into learning about Google ads and testing Google ads. And I was um, really the one called on most frequently to try and solve difficult Google ads or, you know, it was AdWords related questions and, and problems. And although we were signing a lot of clients that were, that we were advertising for them on Facebook, like I wasn't as involved in that process. So it was only over the last probably six months to a year that, well, of course, you know, I, what, I, Facebook wasn't foreign to me. Like I, I knew how to get around a Facebook campaign. I set up plenty of campaigns and, um, and ad sets and, and video ads and dynamic creative ads for clients in the past, but like it wasn't like my real bread and butter. But over the last six months to a year, I've been really focusing on, focusing on it a lot more. But aside from running and setting up some new campaigns, we have a treasure trove of data to look at. We have all our clients that have been advertising on Facebook. Uh, we have millions of dollars of advertising, billions of impressions that we're able to analyze and extract like what we're learning from uh, trends in Facebook's algorithms, what's working, what's not working. Um, on top of that, we also have a Facebook rep that lets us know, you know, different betas that are coming into play and um, different strategies that they and best practices from their end, which leads me to um, one last final point before we dive into actually creating a campaign. And that is um, working with a basic assumption, right? So there's this natural hesitancy to trust Facebook's bidding algorithms, for example. Like you might, no, I wanna choose where we should place the ads. I wanna choose the maximum amount we should bid and so on and so forth. Well, that's coming from a sense of distrust. It's coming from this, this attitude that, well, Facebook just wants to spend your money as much as possible and Google wants to spend your money as much as possible. Well, that's true. And I've said this many times, like there are certain settings in Google that, that are really designed for you to just spend extra money and those should be avoided. But by and large, from an overall company strategy, Facebook wants you to spend as much of your money as possible on their advertising network, but economically they know that that's not, it's, that's, that's only going to happen if your advertising is successful. So while that is their end goal, their end goal is to earn, Facebook's end goal is not to make you as, as successful as possible. Their end goal is to make themselves as successful as possible. But the way to get there is to make your advertising as successful as possible, right? So that's like the simple economics of it. So if Facebook's hiring the world's best developers to develop really, really powerful AI bidding systems, we should at least try and trust it. We should at least try and work with the assumption that it could be very good because conceptually, they're able to optimize for many more data points much faster and more effectively than any human being or team of human beings will ever be able to do. So for example, when you have a Facebook campaign, there are these different levers and gears you could mess around with, right? So you could pick your locations and you should. You could pick your languages. You could pick interests. You could pick in market segments. You could pick lookalike audiences. You could pick remarketing audiences. You could optimize for conversions or you could optimize for likes or you could optimize for engagements or you could do run messenger campaigns. Um, you could do all these things. You could say, I want my ads to only show up on the Facebook newsfeed, but not, but not in Instagram stories, right? You could do all these things. But while you might have a handful of dimensions to play with and to, and to bet on, and, how, and you could decide how much you want to bet on that, on any of those combination of any of those dimensions, Facebook has a lot, lot more, right? So they know um, where people have been. They know what people are buying. They know how much money people are spending. They know the last time somebody bought dog food and where they bought it from and how long it took them to get home with that dog food in their car, right? So there's, and this is not meant as a scary thing, right? They don't know your name. And this is like, this is true. Like it's it's all these data points are, are Facebook knows you as a user, as an alphanumeric string, and they just associate all these other data points to them. So as a very brief example, let's say I'm running this, uh, I'm running, uh, we're gonna be make, creating a campaign today for a, a webinar campaign to get people to sign up for a webinar, which is a pretty common Facebook campaign type. So I hope that this is relevant for a lot of people. Now, my rep, my webinar was really running during the daytime hours because I assume that you know people will be more likely to watch it then and whatever. 
Um, but I decided that I would run my campaigns 24 hours. And, and as long as my conversion tracking is working, as long as I'm feeding Facebook the information when people are registering for the webinar, then that's all I need, right? That's my job. Facebook will decide when is the best time to spend my money based on who's going to register. Facebook knows my decision was based on a broad generalization, which is probably true out of the entire population that I'll be targeting on Facebook more of those people would be willing to watch a webinar during the nine to five hours, right? But Facebook has the ability to individually bid on impressions at 10 o'clock at night because they might know that this specific person signs up for more webinars at 10 o'clock at night. I can't do that. So I would either have to make a decision that is suboptimal because my own personal decision making with the information I personally have available would be a decision made for the group as opposed to the individual. When you trust the automated, the automating automation systems, you're allowing Facebook to make decisions for the individual and not the group. So I think that's an interesting distinction and it's a very, very important part of why you want to focus a lot more on, on, um, on automation. The reason why we're going to talk about dynamic creative today is because dynamic creative is the hallmark product that allows Facebook to optimize for that individual while at scale finding the best variations of advertising assets that have the greatest likelihood of working when they show those ads. Now, I wanna also just make it clear that I'm not saying that you should stop optimizing campaigns. Your job is to get the ball rolling in the strongest possible way. So the, the work now shifts towards coming up with good creative, like better video better images, better copy, and, and like that could keep a whole team busy all day long, right? That's really tough, difficult things. Your job is no longer to say, I wanna bid $1 on this bid, 50 cents on this bid, you know, a maximum of 30 cents for this placement. I don't wanna show an Instagram stories, unless there's some very, very specific reason why you can't show an Instagram stories or whatever it is, but you don't wanna be um, limiting based on generalizations anymore. So you wanna start off with like, okay, there's nothing wrong with picking lookalike audiences because that's feeding the system very good information. There's nothing wrong with starting off with, um, you know, this interest category. And we're gonna do that, we're gonna test those. And that's why you test multiple ad sets. So without any further delay, let us um, jump into Facebook and we're going to um, start poking around and building out a campaign. So most of you are familiar with the Facebook ads dashboard. Here I am, this is ad sets for one campaign. Um, I'm not gonna give an overview of the Facebook ads dashboard here. I'm hoping a lot of the navigation throughout the, throughout the dashboard will be familiar to you. And we're gonna go and create a new campaign. This is gonna be a similar campaign to a campaign that I'm currently running, but um, I wanna build it from scratch because that'll give the best educational value, building it from scratch, but of course you could always easily duplicate a campaign. So from the campaigns tab, I'm gonna create a campaign. And here we are in this um, very, to me personally, overwhelming overview of what we're gonna be doing here. And I think that Facebook's advertising backend system is way too complex and way too overwhelming than, or way more overwhelming than it has to be. So just for example here, so just over here, I could choose an auction system or a reach and frequency system, and that just filters out the potential different types of marketing objectives that um, are available to me. So the auction, the auction canopy or the auction broader category has the most available amounts of um, options. So 99% of you are gonna use two of these um, types of uh, campaigns. So it's either messages where you're sending people who click an ad to Facebook Messenger or conversions, right? You wanna optimize for conversions or catalog sales. Um, but really conversions, and, and there's a lot of overlap here because a sale of a product could also be a conversion. Lead gen could also be a conversion, right? So there's like, and what in the world does consideration mean? Like they wanna like, you know, it's just like, it's just so complex. Brand awareness, right? You're not Geico, so you're not looking to spend money indefinitely without seeing any real results. Reach is this type of thing where like Google will just optimize for the most, Facebook rather would opt, is gonna optimize your campaigns to spend your budget on the most amount of impressions regardless of their, if they're showing it to people who will take a meaningful action, regardless of, the, regardless of whether or not 
your ads will be shown to people that will actually convert. Engagement, traffic, video views, these are all like very secondary um, optimization strategies that 99, like I said, 99% of you are not interested in doing. And then of course there are people with that have apps that if your main objective is to install an app, you would use an app install campaign. But again, you're really gonna focus on conversions and messages. So in this um, 